everyone. Welcome to the Crazy Kryptonaut channel. How's it going, Trish and David? Y'all definitely made it in early. Guess it was the picture of Valentino. Thank you guys so much for joining. And Wanda and Neil, and I see some questions here after I go through some hellos. I'll come back and we'll, we'll get through some of these questions. But, oh, Kukla, thank you so much, as always, for coming and helping. And, yes, Wanda and Neil and Grumpy. Uh, it is good to see everyone. It is good to see everyone. And 71 degrees back in North Kakalaki. Things are finally changing up. Things are changing up. I bet that's much appreciated, but I bet everyone is hating the pollen. I bet everyone is absolutely hating the pollen. Oh, definitely, definitely. Hit that like button if you appreciate the classes, the live streams, and the community. I know I have been having a blast with it. And I'm starting to feel a whole lot more comfortable when it comes to recording the videos. And so things are becoming easier and easier and easier in that regard. Um, I do think I'm going to go back to the normal look for our questions when they pop up. What's up, Teddo? Hope that you are having an absolutely wonderful one. And absolutely, Trish, I hope that it's going to be a quality Easter for all. <laughs> Bear, we all know Tino as well as the Kryptonaut logo. I have a feeling that, uh, that, that Tino may be more exciting for everyone than the uh, little astronaut logo, but I am not certain. <laughs> oh, Folly, welcome for your first class today. 88 degrees in Arizona and a lot of pollen. I didn't know pollen was a big issue in Arizona. I, I, guess, uh, I guess we all kind of have a bit of a, a, a Hollywood type um picture when we think of arizona i did not know that pollen was such a problem but let me go back because i know we did have a few questions in here and so wanted to go ahead and hit those as we get rolling and so wanda asks hi zester there's several different xrp symbols which one do we buy and so wanda my first question is going to be on what platform are you attempting to purchase and so whenever you see a different form of XRP or a different symbol on a lot of these different exchanges, what they're indicating is that it's XRP on the Ethereum blockchain or it's XRP on the Binance uh, smart chain. And so if you see one that is just XRP, no, not XRP dash VSC, not, not XRP, you know, uh, and with anything else on there. That should be XRP on the actual XRP Ledger network. And so uh, I, I have a few more questions on that one, Wanda, but I definitely would like to help out. I know that if you make the purchase of your XRP on Coinbase, you don't have to worry about it. There's only one version of XRP available on, uh, on Coinbase. And I think the platform that is messing everyone up is Lobster. If you are making your purchase of XRP on Lobster, you are purchasing XRP that is on the Stellar blockchain. You're purchasing XRP that is on the XLM blockchain, which means you're going to have a heck of a hard time getting that XRP over and into your XRP wallet on, say, your Ledger hardware wallet, if that's where you are storing it. So I, I'm, I'm guessing that it's a lobster deal. Uh, Neil Brooks says, Zester, I bought Dai after listening to your recent podcast. Now, what do I do to stake? Oh, that's an interesting one, Neil. And so remember with DAI, DAI is an algorithmically backed stablecoin. And that means it is pegged to the dollar, but there is not a dollar sitting in a bank account. It's math. Math is what is maintaining the price. And so should there be any issue where DAI's price starts to fall, then the algorithm kicks into effect and it starts buying DAI to get the DAI price back up. DAI's price starts going above a dollar, the algorithm starts doing the opposite. And so it utilizes these different functions in order to maintain the price. And so DAI is very, very intriguing. And what I imagine you were uh, referring to is actually when I showed everyone, MakerDAO does offer um, the ability to deposit DAI. And as you can see, these percentages change on a daily basis. Uh, and so these are the die savings rate, current die savings rate is 13%. And so Neil, unfortunately that's going to require a whole video to show everyone how to do. 
but I am interested in staking a bit of dye. I'm not going to buy a lot of it because I'm always a little hesitant by the fact that it is algorithmically backed. It has maintained its price throughout with very few slip ups. Uh, it is brilliant. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Mathematical savants created the, the dye ecosystem and, and what it's capable of doing. I do want to hold some, and we are absolutely going to be staking it over here with Spark, aka powered by MakerDAO. And so, Neil, look forward to that one. I'm thinking that would be a great video, actually, for me to record over the weekend, and maybe I'll take $100 or something of that nature. But Oh, I have forgotten. I have forgotten. And I'm certain Kukla has reminded me, but I'm still up here at the beginning of the comments. Anything that is said throughout this podcast by me, through the channel, uh, in the chat room, should absolutely not be viewed as financial advice in any form or fashion. It is entirely for entertainment purposes. And so please do your own research and consult with a financial pro professional before making any decisions. And uh, that is always one. I need to figure out some kind of way to not have to go through and say that at the beginning of every video. But uh, I'm not certain what the option is besides to just go ahead and make certain that it's said. So, Neil, we will. We will go through and we will check that one out in a, in a video all to itself just because there is a little bit more explanation that is needed when it comes down to understanding what MakerDAO and what Spark are doing with your die when you have given it to them. And so we will jump onto that one because I think that would be a good thing to include in the community portfolio. It'd be something fun for us to keep up with each week. We can check and see how is our, how, how, how is our earning going? Um, if it ends up being very successful, then maybe it'll be something that, uh, that I end up putting a lot more dollars behind, but we'll have to see. All right, continuing forward. Oh, David, David, I, uh, I am glad, glad that you were there for both of those lessons last night. The one on Hedera, that is HBAR, the Hedera Hashgraph, and the XDC Network. Those videos were, were definitely niche. I know that it was a very specific group of people that have been having issues. I understand why. And so just went ahead, made the videos. That way people could actually get their crypto over to a safe place. I, I it, it was definitely a first for me with XDC. I was aware and had had Hedera in the past, but I had only traded it. I had never tried to hold it long term. And so I didn't know that there was this entire ordeal that, that was required if you wanted to actually place it onto a hardware wallet. And so that one was interesting. XDC, um, I know that a fair amount of people in the community hold it. It is something that was entirely new to me. I had never heard of it had no idea what people were talking about. And, and so I have a little bit more research that I probably need to do there in terms of what the company is doing, um, whether they're profitable or not, and if they have a, a niche to fill going into the future. But Hedera, absolutely. There, there's a lot going on there. That's a longstanding company. Uh, I would think that many would argue that it is a blue chip uh, cryptocurrency. All right, though. Uh, mile high, Trish. I would love that weather. Just waiting for another storm to hit. Rain and snow. Crazy Arizona weather. Oh, I, I, I guess it's easy to forget. It's kind of like Colorado. There are so many different ecosystems, environments, temperatures, and elevations inside of Arizona and Colorado and many other, other Rocky Mountain states that I think we forget just how crazy the weather can get over there. Howdy, Kukla. Are you enjoying the Tino photo today for the thumbnail? He enjoys posing for photos, apparently. Oh, Teddo. Hey there, Teddo. From Switzerland. Very cool. Very cool. What is y'all's weather looking like at this time of year, Teddo? I honestly would. I mean, I'm going to assume that you're heading towards spring. But I don't know what the weather would be like at the higher elevations in Switzerland. All right, I'm going to try to catch up, guys. I'm going to try to catch up. Howdy, Callie. Oh, and Stevie G. Thank you guys so much for joining in. Um, Annie Miller says, Hi, Zester. I had XRP on Lobster and had no problems on getting it on my Nano Ledger. 
but is it on the Nano on Lobster? I, I'm not certain well, with the question there, Annie. And so if you withdrew your XRP from Lobster and you sent it to your wallet address on Ledger and you can see it in Ledger Live, you can see the XRP there, your XRP is no longer on Lobster. Lobster has no holds over it and they are not in control. And so what I think is, is that it's more so that when you made the purchase on Lobster, I think that it does give a bunch of different options and that that may be what, what is leading to the confusion where you can purchase XRP on the Stellar Network or you can purchase regular XRP. I, I'm not really certain where, where the complication occurs because I was going through and I was looking on the Lobster platform and I, I seemingly, they, their verbiage went back and forth. One time they said I was buying XRP the next time they were said I was buying XLM XRP, aka XRP on the Stellar Network. Uh, I highly recommend, guys, when it comes down to it, especially with things like XRP, XLM, the, these easy go-to cryptos that are big, big market caps, I highly recommend utilizing Coinbase. I've never had an issue, not once, when it comes to making certain that I've gotten the right asset. I, I can absolutely see where the difficulty is occurring for those that are on Lobster. It, the platform makes it very, very easy to click buttons and, and spend money. It, it does not make it very easy to understand what the heck you just spent money on. And so I, I'm curious on that one, Annie. Uh, definitely, if I see another comment come through with any more info, I will try to jump back on it. <laughs> Callie Rose, I feel like I'm in geometry class. Well, I understand very little. I get that. I get that. Uh, yeah, maybe that's just what I need to do, Kukla. I can just highlight the disclaimer and maybe then I don't need to say it. I can just uh, peer over it at everyone. <laughs> hey, Missy D. Kia, Kiora. Kiora. Everyone from New Zealand. Thank you so much for tuning in. Neil Brooks says, I'm old enough now. I'm thinking of retirement. I need a real aggressive approach to making a passive income. Uh, that, that, that is, that's a, that's a tough one nowadays, Neil. There's so many, but we're all trying to beat the inflation rate. And that's what's made it so difficult to try and, and create these passive income sources. Because nowadays, we, we can't throw it into, you know, a long-term CD. Uh, you know, we, we can't go and say, oh, you're, you're offering two and a half percent. You know, in the savings account at the bank, we can't go with a route like that. We're not even competing with inflation. So it is definitely not an easy one to tackle nowadays, Neil. Not in the slightest. Uh, Dwayne Strell says, shoot, should have been on earlier. I was able to move my lumens off lobster. Just can't pull up my ripple. Um, Dwayne, I, I think that I'm going to have to go through and actually do another video on Lobster specifically for these mirrored assets. And so I, I'm getting to the point where I think that may be necessary. And it's probably an issue that is far beyond just our community. Uh, I know from, from using the platform, it was one of the first things that I noticed the second that I logged into it. You know, everyone said they needed help with Lobster, needed help with Lobster. I jump into it and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like, why, why, why have we made it so easy to do certain things and so difficult to do others? And so I think, Dwayne, that I'm just going to need to actually go on there and and buy a little ripple on Lobster and then go through the process with everyone in a recorded video. I think that's going to be the option. Uh, the, for making a monthly siphon, are there options? Oh, uh, now, if you were looking for things of that nature, Neil, there is the ability through Coinbase to set up recurring purchases or recurring deposits. And if I were looking at anything of that nature, Neil, I would probably, and so one second while I actually pull this one up, if I were looking at something where I could make a, a regular small purchase of it and it would just be a normal siphon, out of the, you know, every Friday, every pay period, whatever that may be, I would probably just look to the very easy one, which would be over on Coinbase with USDC. Um, is 5.1% going to make you a millionaire and, and settle retirement? No, 
It is not. But USDC is a stable coin and it is 100% backed. And so when you put your $1 into USDC, you can always just get your dollar back. So whenever you need that money, Neil, you can always go in, pull those back out to regular dollars, but you're able to keep earning a 5.1% APY while your money is effectively sitting there doing nothing anyway. And so uh, are there risks? Of course, you know, there, there are very, 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 very small risks that something happens with Coinbase, you know, there, there's any kind of delay with getting your money. But uh, when it comes down to it, the 5.1% APY that they're offering when you consider the risk that you are taking on is an insanely high interest rate to be earning. It's insanely high. Uh, when you consider that your money is not even being used and it's not locked. And so if you actually just hold USDC on Coinbase, every month you get paid and they're not even using your money. I did some research on this one because I was curious and I was like, well, what is Coinbase doing with my money? You know, they must be lending it. They must be staking it. They must be doing something. And that's why they're able to pay me. They're actually not. It's just an incentive program. And so they are bleeding cash to you at a 5.1% yearly rate um, entirely just so that you will keep your stable coins on their platform so that you will move more U.S. dollars over to their stable coin. And so if I were looking to a very, very easy one, that is something that really I, I don't see how you could go but so wrong. The money is still available. You can always have it back. And you paid minimal small fees in order to convert your dollars over to USDC. It's essentially nothing because it's a stable coin purchase. It's fractions of a percent. And now you collect a monthly, you collect a monthly rate. And so you can also have that one set up to make automatic deposits. So if I were just looking at one real quick, Neil, that is definitely not the highest rate you could earn out there. There are probably other ways to go about it, but that is the easiest one. If you were just looking at something that you could regularly start saving money for retirement with. Oh, welcome, Lady Patriot. And, and Jorge, hope everyone is having an amazing one. And Baja Girl, thank you guys so much for joining in. And we are uh, kind of getting back to that one, Neil. We are going to be going through and, and setting up some different staking ourselves. And so at first, um, I'm probably going to go with the USDC staking option on Coinbase because it's not really staking. Um, we're not locking our money. We can have it whenever we want. The second we decide to leave with our USDC, the only penalty is we, we quit earning our interest rate. It's the only negative. But nowadays, 5.1%, that is, I mean, I know at least in terms of what my bank offered me the last time I was in there and they were trying to sell me on a savings account. I think they were offering me like 1.8 yearly uh, on my savings account. So, I mean, I, I can triple that with Coinbase, triple it. And so it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a tempting one, especially with it being so safe and there not really being a lot of inherent risk to my principal. Uh, beyond that, though, we will be participating in MakerDAO and in a lot of other ones. We're just not going to put a lot of dollars into each of these. It's more going to be a matter of testing it, learning it, showing everyone our results. And then when we see the results, well, then we'll follow the, we'll follow the science and we'll put more dollars behind it. All right, though, guys. So we do have a little bit of news to go through today. Uh, of course, for those that, that were paying attention to the news cycle yesterday, some of the news today will maybe be a bit of a repeat. But we're going to do a little bit more of a backstory behind the Sam Fried, Bankman Freed uh, and FTX collapse and his recent sentencing to 25 years in federal prison. And so that is what we'll be jumping into right after we go through and just see where we're looking in terms of prices and so bitcoin is continuing to have issues with seventy thousand. um we have a few more articles that discuss this later but what we are seeing is we're seeing a, a continued massive boom with the meme coins 
for some reason, it is meme coin season when it comes to Dogecoin. Um, Shiba only sitting at 16.2%. But the one that's even more intriguing is that we actually have a new competitor in the meme coin space. Dog with hat. So, yes, this is a, hilariously a joke. But um, it is a joke that is worth over $4 billion on paper. And so Dog With Hat is now the third largest meme token on the planet. Yeah, Dog With Hat. And so for those that chose to invest in Dog With Hat, well, they're, they're probably pretty happy today with their results. Dog With Hat was launched on the Solana blockchain. And it has seen a 264,266% appreciation in price since uh, December 13th of 2023. Yes, this is, uh, this is ridiculous, guys. This is absolutely ridiculous. Sorry, I, I'm, uh, I'm looking at the percentages. Uh, I was still perplexed by it. I was doing research before the stream today, and I was like, are right, you got to be kidding me. There's no way that I'm about to cover a cryptocurrency named dog with hat that is worth four billion dollars and so many people became overnight millionaires on account of the dog with the hat uh and so yeah you live and you learn i guess we all should have been to buying um dog hats when it comes down to these meme coins guys there's really no way to to predict it besides to just keep your ear to the ground um, I tend towards the idea of, of exactly that, Baja Girl. You know, to me, all of the meme coins are effectively a scam. Uh, it doesn't mean I won't buy them and participate, but I'm not going to plan my future on being rescued by something named Dog Whip Hat. And so that one was pretty hilarious. That seems to be where a lot of money is currently going. Now, BNB is doing particularly well. There are a lot of rumors that the Binance Corporation is actually propping up the price of BNB right now, trying to keep it um, above Solana. And so if you notice Solana sitting at an 84 billion and BNB sitting at a 94 billion, I know that there are a lot of rumors out there that Binance is, is very, very protective of their status as being the 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 effectively third largest blockchain on the planet and they are not willing to step down and let solana take that position away from them of course these are rumors we do not know with any certainty whether the binance executives or the binance corporation is the one making the purchases but we do know that the price of bnb continues to go up while we do not see investor interest and so we have not seen a lot of money flow into the Binance Smart Chain, um, but we have seen the price of BNB continue to rise. And so uh, one of the easy ways to look at that is look at the volume. Uh, BNB here is sitting at $2,715,000,000 in 24-hour volume. We can see Solana sitting at $3,458,000,000. Um, we can see stable coins sitting at nearly 7 billion we can see dogecoin is sitting at 3.7 billion and so there are a lot of rumors speculating around about bnb's price actions and that that something is afoot uh i of course will be keeping an eye on it but i am not certain not certain uh overcoming really wow probably should pray and yeah and ask uh, jesus what to invest in he knows uh, I, it's, it's a difficult one when it comes down to it. The only thing I've ever found that genuinely results in success is just constant, constant observation. Um, maintain constant view on the social medias, see what people are talking about. That's how I've gotten those lucky breaks when I have managed to find a crypto, particularly early. It's because of a lot, a lot of paying attention. Um, uh, mile high Trish, what do you query to get that list of crypto? And so I always utilize coingecko.com, mile high Trish. That is my go-to. It is the same idea as coin market cap. 
but CoinGecko tends to have far more accurate price information and analytics. And so data that is coming out from different APIs seems to work better on CoinGecko. So it is my go-to. CoinGecko allows you to come in and separate things on all different levels. So you can click here and this separates by different blockchains. And so that allows us to see the, the different ranking of different blockchains and their total value locked. Of course, we see that Ethereum is the dominant blockchain besides Bitcoin, of course. Um, we can go and look at play to earn games. And so these would only be games that you can play and you can earn crypto by participating and playing the game. And there are a multitude of different other options. And so you can come right up to cryptocurrencies, go to categories, and you can break it down to layer one cryptos. Um, smart contract platforms. This one is particularly interesting. You can look at alleged SEC securities. And so this would show you only cryptos that are currently um, under suspicion of being viewed by the SEC as being securities. And so each one of these different ones kind of allows you to go through. Here's the meme one where we can see Dogecoin, Shiba, Dog with Hat. And Pepe, where you can see that Dog with Hat just recently unseated Pepe to become the third largest meme coin on the planet. Um, David Lewis, how does one start a coin themselves? Uh, we can call the coin Cat Club. Actually, David, I was debating going ahead and launching one today during the live stream, but I have decided that I think it's much better that I make videos of that nature in a recorded form because it seems like people are able to utilize that format a lot, a lot easier. It's, it's just better all around, it seems. At least that's what I'm getting from the comments, from the emails, from everybody and everything they're saying is that those recorded videos make it a lot easier to follow along. And so I am debating actually putting out, uh, I don't know whether I would call it Valentino token or maybe Penny. Maybe we, we, uh, we hijack Penny and we launch Penny a cryptocurrency. It would of course, just be a joke, but it would be a great way of showing everyone what it actually looks like to launch a crypto. I think people would be quite amazed if they saw how easily I could go out there and launch a crypto. It, it takes me about an hour to go from start to finish. And that includes throwing in uh, extra stuff that isn't necessary. If I really just wanted to launch a crypto, I could probably launch one in about 10 minutes in about 10 minutes with whatever name I wanted and whatever rules I wanted it to have. It is, uh, it's kind of crazy. But all right, guys, let's get into the news from yesterday. Sam Bankman Freed sentenced to 25 years in prison. SBF, uh, I can never get his name correct. I don't know what about Sam Bankman Freed, I cannot seem to get correct, but for some reason it's always Sam Bank Friedman or Sam Sam Bank Friedman. I cannot cannot get that name correct, but we're just going to go with Sam or SBF as we discuss him today. A judge sentenced Bankman Freed to a quarter century after a brief hearing. And so, for those that are not aware of the situation, Sam was sentenced to 25 years yesterday, nearly six months after being convicted on a host of fraud charges tied to his role in the implosion of the FTX exchange and Alameda research trading firm in November of 2022. Um, he had been defrauding investors. He had been utilizing investors' dollars to do his own things, to do some pretty crazy things, actually. And we're going to go into a bit of that. But he got lucky, in all honesty. Uh, the sentence is lengthy but it could have been much harsher it is only a quarter of the 105 years that was recommended by the department of probation and roughly half of the 40 to 50 year sentence prosecutors pushed the new york court to impose and so he got particularly lucky only having to go for 25 years considering he had defrauded and stolen billions of dollars that is not with an m that is with a b he stole billions of dollars from people, committed insider trading, and a litany of other crimes. His legal team made arguments um, really all across the board. Uh, they, they argued that, that he is, is not capable of making his own decisions, 
They argued that he was suffering from depression. They argued that he is suffering from different forms of mental issues regarding his cognitive abilities. It really turned into a big joke. But needless to say, it has effectively ended the saga uh, of SBF. Uh, we're not probably going to hear about him all that often, I would imagine, for the next 25 years. And so for those that were not aware, were not aware, back when this all actually occurred, um, Sam Bankman Freed is is got way more of a reach inside of politics and the globe than you would imagine. Being a 30-year-old billionaire just two years ago, he was the second largest donator to Democratic political candidates of any person on the planet. The only person who donated more to Democratic political issues was George Soros. And that meant that Sam actually spent um, tens of millions, I believe, of dollars. I think it was actually nearly a hundred million dollars on different democratic political campaigns back in 2020. He also supported a variety of different political action committees and groups doing a litany of different things around the world. He is someone who is entrenched or was entrenched in the Silicon Valley tech space uh, where, where they all are smarter than us, according to what they think. And they all believe that they know how the country should work and the globe should work. He was absolutely one of those. And so his, his loss actually to the Democratic Party was huge. There were major groups, uh, major, major different groups that were arguing that they may not be able to fund their organization anymore because of the fact that, uh, well, he didn't have any money. And so this was an entire insanity. And so I, I happen to be a big skeptic of the crypto craze. But I was intrigued by this 30-year-old who had supposedly amassed a $30 billion fortune and had then become an influential political donor. And so he was going around paying for expensive parties, um, paying for meet and greets. He purchased a $3 million house right down the road from the White House so that he could host lobbyists and things of that nature very, very close to, uh, to the seats of power. He paid for all kinds of different things, bought, bought houses um, and invested in, in companies for different political, uh, for different Democratic candidates that their families were participating in and things of that nature. Needless to say, this guy is not just dirty, he is beyond dirty. And uh, he, has a, he has actually had to pay the cost. And so uh, not, not only did we see essentially a massive degree of his investment back in 2022 and 2021, so he was the second biggest Democratic donor of 2022 midterms behind only the 92-year-old financier George Soros. Here, though, is the kicker. SBF claimed he would be looking at $1 billion as a soft ceiling for his political contributions in the 2024 elections. And so uh, there, there's a there's a billion less dollars getting spent on certain political issues, uh, thanks to the fact that he will be sitting inside eating, hopefully, hopefully not, not, not seeing too much of the outdoors and eating his three squares in club fed. And so, yes, that is the big story of yesterday. SBF effect uh, finally is going to have to pay the price for his actions, and it also happens to have repercussions that extend far beyond just the uh, just cryptocurrency. It, it has serious, serious effects on our politics. And uh, just kind of as a little bit of that juicy gossip, and because I know many people probably weren't aware, uh, there is a whole lot more to the story of SBF. Uh, I'm not going to dig but so deep into this story just because I'm certain that, that that there are certain words, certain things stated inside of it that are outside of what I consider to be this uh, this channel's acceptable um, acceptable verbiage. But of course, it, it was. It was a whole whole story. It sounds like something out of a movie. Uh, participating in partner swapping pills and playing games inside. SBF's FTX party house. And so he had purchased a party house in the Bahamas, a $40 million establishment. 
and uh, this is where he would uh, this is where he would party it up. And so people uh, people state the feeling was that they were treating Albany kind of like a frat house. And so of course, judging by the photos, uh, I mean, I'm it looks like a pretty sweet dig to me as well. Um, this is uh, they would walk around in sweats and t-shirts. On an island paradise of money, traditionalist SBF and some of his employees led a life allegedly fueled by drugs, vegetarian food, and open sexuality. Um, I do think that there's starting to be something to be said here. Vegetarian. He would force everyone at the different political campaigns to eat vegetarian dishes because that is what he preferred. Um, uh, I, there are a lot of very famous vegetarians throughout human history. Uh, a lot of very, very famous ones. Um, unfortunately, the most famous tend to be ones that are not exactly looked back um, in a positive light. I suppose they are more infamous. And so another vegetarian to, to enter on to that list of, infinite, of, uh, of infamous people. And so uh, him and his on and off again girlfriend, um, uh, one Carolyn Ellison, who was also a part of the insanity. So it was stimulants or amphetamines when they woke up, sleeping pills when they needed to sleep. They would make use of a drug called MSAM in patch form, a methamphetamine derivative. And so, uh, they, you know, all these different things. But uh, yeah, a whole story there. I'm not going to dig any more into it, but I am going to have that link inside of the daily links. So anyone that does want to dig into the, uh, the sordid lives uh, of the of the wealthy people who make decisions for the rest of us, uh, you can see that uh, the the people making these decisions and spending this money uh, are not capable of taking care of themselves, much less making decisions for the rest of us. And so, now that we've kind of gone over SBF, we're going to leave that one all behind. But these links will be available for those that want to learn more. Uh, as we had discussed earlier, Dog with Hat becomes third largest meme coin in market capitalization. Um, I guess the name adds up. That is a dog with a hat. And so a dog with a hat reached a market cap of $3.6 billion, placing it as the third highest meme coin. Um, it was, as I had mentioned earlier, launched on the Solana chain. Remember, we had talked about that one a week ago, guys. Solana meme coins are absolutely exploding right now. As a matter of fact, we have even more stories discussing that one as we continue on. As Solana Foundation says it can filter through the offensive meme coin problem. Panelists at a Build Asia Summit argue racist meme coins can be handled with a filter. Um, so I am not a participant over on the Solana blockchain, but I was not aware that, that people were apparently launching a bunch of racist cryptocurrencies over there. Um, and so it comes on here to say, as funny and irreverent as meme coins are, the category also has a problem with an explosion of tokens with names containing the N-word and other racist themes. And so it seems as if Solana plans on trying to tackle this. This was not an issue I was even aware existed just because I don't participate in Solana. Solana is kind of, it's kind of the, the, the blockchain of developers. It's a, it's a nerdy blockchain. Uh, most of the people that have their money inside of Solana are also developers or institutions. It's not really a retail investor's blockchain. It's not like Ethereum that's designed for everyone to participate or Binance Smart Chain that's designed for everyone to participate. It's not even like XRP where it's it's at least made easy for everyone to participate. Solana is kind of in its own little space. Very interesting. They build some pretty amazing products but their products are not interchangeable with the other blockchains, whereas Ethereum uh, smart contracts are usable on a multitude of different blockchains. And so the Solana meme coin craze uh, has been funny to watch. Uh, it appears as if it is starting to trail off. And I would imagine Dog with Hat is probably going to be effectively the uh, one of the ending bells uh, of the Solana meme coin craze. Uh, we have seen micro strategies slump 14% after short seller says that stock trades at an unjustifiable premium to Bitcoin. And so for those that are not aware, micro strategies is the company owned by Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor and micro strategies are the largest institutional owners of Bitcoin on the planet. They have got a ton of it, an absolute ton of Bitcoin. 
And so the Bitcoin price implied by MicroStrategy share price is 177,000, two and a half times the spot price of the cryptocurrency. And so what people are saying is that the average institutional investors have overvalued the price of MicroStrategy stock and that Bitcoin would need to achieve a price tag of 177,000 per coin in order to back it up. This is something that we see very often during the Bitcoin uh, bull markets or the crypto, the crypto springs, the crypto summers. We see a lot of these institutional investors, they flock to the stocks they can buy. They flock to the traditional finance and they overvalue them. Uh, it's kind of like when Coinbase initially released their stock price, uh, their stock plummeted and it's because they had overvalued it. And it seems as if it's kind of the same idea as like the like the internet boom uh, of the very early 2000s, um, where where we saw a lot of different internet digital companies absolutely skyrocket in value far above and beyond what they were actually worth. And so I think the same situation is occurring with micro strategies, where we have seen investors drastically overvalue the stock price because they're they're they've, they've kind of just gotten into the craze. It's FOMO. And for many, they feel more comfortable purchasing stocks than they do feel purchasing a cryptocurrency. And so rather than investing in Bitcoin, they buy shares of micro strategies. And so in that way, they are providing themselves with some exposure to the Bitcoin markets, but they're avoiding having to actually go out and purchase a Bitcoin. And so not too surprising there. I'm certain that that many investors though are quite sad because they uh, they have gotten in to a bit of a pickle. Whenever you see something has gone up hundreds of percent in a matter of a month, it's usually wise to do a little research and figure out whether it actually makes sense. All right, Bitcoin futures open interest hits a record thirty six billion dollars before options expiry. And so Bitcoin futures open interest surged over 38 billion as Bitcoin price increased 10% along the week. And so what we're seeing is more and more and more interest in terms of futures. And so these are people that are making bets, primarily institutions that are making bets on what they think the prices are going to be in the future. It seems as if we are looking at, a, again, a particularly bullish um speculative market at the moment and so nothing has essentially changed in terms of logic behind the market at the moment guys we are trading effectively sideways at the moment that's why we're seeing mean coins do particularly well um, i would expect us to if we continue to trade sideways i would expect for that craze in terms of value to move away from meme coins and, and move over to some of the different altcoins maybe focusing on decentralized finance maybe focusing on the new ERC-404 protocol, um, uh, something of that nature. It tends to be that, that the market doesn't stay focused on one thing, but for so long. And whenever Bitcoin trades sideways like this, folks start to get antsy. They start looking for things. And so I, I'm expecting us to see that happen in the near future. I'm thinking that we're going to see a different sector start to get some interest. All right, though. Howdy, Petricor. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, Pirate to Godly, let's let AI make a Trump mugshot coin. There you go. We can do that. I am a, a, a huge fan of AI. Uh, maybe someday I will have to do a little video showing people some of the things that I can, uh, some of the things that I can get AI to do for me. It is absolutely absurd where that technology is gone. I am scared for the future of the vast majority of people's jobs. Hey, Petricor, it was the super cute thumbnail of Valentino that lured me here. Zester knows how to market. Hello, well, when in doubt, it's always kitten marketing. Uh, maybe I should pioneer that idea. I'll open kitten marketing uh, LLC or something. And uh, all we provide is pictures of cute kittens and we see if it works. Oh, uh, yeah, that penny hanging on the wall trying to get a treat would make a great meme for her token. There you go. There you go. Hey, Pops has tuned in. He is way better at it than me. Uh, uh, give yourself credit, Pops. Give yourself credit. 
I, I do need to show you, though, how I am generating some of these different uh, thumbnails and everything of that nature and how I'm getting those pops. Need to, I think you would have fun, have fun with that one. So maybe we need to have a little sit down and, uh, you know, trade, trade some, trade some secrets. <laughs> All right, though, jumping back onto our news. Oh, I, I will. I will wait one second because definitely for all the latecomers, definitely it would be appreciated if you hit that like button. But continuing forward. All right. UK court freezes six million of Craig Wright's assets to prevent evading court costs. And so this story um, is a breaking one of the day. For those that are not aware, Craig Wright is a person who claimed to be the creator of Bitcoin. And so he had argued in court that he was the creator of Bitcoin falsely. And so the court found him to be uh, to, to be lying. And so they have frozen over six million dollars, six million pounds. So seven point six million dollars U.S. of Craig Wright's assets um, because they're worried that he's going to go uh, go trying to run off. And so the ruling stems from a court case initiated by the Crypto Open Patent Alliance, COPA, which challenged Wright's claims of being Satoshi Nakamoto. And so essentially, there have been people in different areas, in different jurisdictions, trying to claim that, that they are, are deserving of some kind of right over Bitcoin technology. Of course, as we have talked about before, no one knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is, the pseudon pseudonymous uh, title of the creator of Bitcoin. No one is aware. And so uh, Mr. Wright here apparently decided to try and, and push a claim saying that he was deserving of, uh, of certain rights when it came down to it. And so in the decision rendered on March 14th, Judge Malore not only debunked Wright's assertions, but also determined that he did not author the Bitcoin white paper or the initial versions of the Bitcoin software. Shortly after the court's ruling, Wright made a move to transfer shares of his RCJBR holding company to De Morgan, a Singapore-based entity. And so that's the reason that they went ahead and locked him down. They think he's trying to run with the money and they're a little ornery about it. And so Craig Wright is not Satoshi. Uh, according to the UK court, I don't think that there was ever really a question uh, on this one. But uh, one piece of evidence is the usage of both we and I in the Bitcoin white paper, indicating the possibility of a team operating under a similar pseudonym. And so uh, that is something that, as we had discussed previously, you know, there are there are there are many arguments that Satoshi is not just a singular person. As a matter of fact, very often when he was writing, he wrote in completely different writing styles on a regular basis. And so there is even a high likelihood that the person who was posting as Satoshi himself uh, was, was a rotating group of people. Uh, maybe Satoshi just uh, had moods and, and so chose to write and, and speak and utilize words in, in different ways on different days. But uh, it seems far more likely that it was more than just one guy working on this process. Uh, and he, he, he admitted that it was very often. He never admitted that they were him, but he admitted that he had people helping him. Uh, they had open forums where people were discussing back and forth. And so those conversations are not hidden in any form or fashion. But needless to say, that was another one of the little stories of the day. Another fake Satoshi smacked down. Maybe someday we will know. I highly doubt it. I imagine whoever Satoshi truly is, um, is never going to admit it. If we ever see any of the Bitcoin that we know is owned by the Satoshi Nakamoto wallet move, I am certain that it would cause an absolute uproar. If at any point a single one of those Bitcoin move, I have no doubt that the market is going to absolutely plummet. In the short term, if any of Satoshi's wallet were ever to be accessed so far since the day that Satoshi mined the Bitcoin, he has never moved any of it. And so as far as we're aware, that that Bitcoin is gone. It's effectively burnt or, or held away safely somewhere. You would imagine with, with him having mined the amount that he did and him being worth billions and billions of dollars, 
if he chose to sell it, that if he had any intention of ever actually accessing that Bitcoin, he would have already done it. And he never has. So I am under the impression that Satoshi does not have any intention of ever spending that, or he has no intention of ever spending any of that money until Bitcoin is worth well over a million dollars a coin, something of that nature. So, all right, though, guys, that is all of the news that we were going through today. These links will be included inside of the Discord for anyone who does want to check those out. Um, in particular, anyone that really wants to have a lot of fun going through the uh, the insanity of SBF. There is way more out there. I didn't even include some of the different articles because of the salacious nature uh, of the things discussed. And so I had to very, very um, much so try and pick a, a PG-13 article on this one. And so for any of those that do want to learn even more, it doesn't take much more than a few Google searches. And you can see a lot of the cancer that, that, uh, that seems to grow when you give people too much money. Um, I don't know whether SBF was that way before he became a, a billionaire, you know, in his mid-20s. But I have to imagine that a lot changed. I have to imagine that a lot changed. Oh, what is up, Speed Racer? I'm glad that you could tune on in. And, of course, HK and Scap. Thank you so much for joining this evening. Absolutely. And so if we do have any more questions, guys, I would be happy to go through and answer anything that we've got here at the end. Otherwise... Um, be looking forward to a bunch of videos. And so I have gotten far more comfortable with, with actually pre-recording the videos and the process behind that. And I'm planning on making that really the mainstay of the classes. And so if we're going to be going through and we're going to be going through a class, I'm going to be making those pre-recorded videos from now on. And then we're going to be viewing the live streams as more of an opportunity to ask questions, to go through the news, and to speculate a little bit more. We'll be speculating during our live streams. We'll be hitting the facts in terms of tutorials and how things function on our recorded videos. I was having a big issue with some of these different lessons because I have a lot of personal information that is on the screen. And so while I trust the community and I'm not worried about it, I also know that I, I can't go putting out all of that information everywhere. And so there's a lot of different videos that I was struggling to try to figure out how to make into a live stream. I'm just going to go ahead and start recording like crazy when it comes to classes. And so we're going to be doing a, more like uh, more like office hours, I guess, as they would have called them in uh, in college with the live streams. And so I think that's going to work out well. Definitely, guys, as I'm going through, I am learning. Um, I, I do not have any teaching degree. I love to teach. I, I love to, to pontificate and to discuss. But so if there are ways that, that, that it could improve or things that could be made more clear, definitely leave, leave comments, go to the Discord, um, post a ticket if you, if you feel like you don't want to say it in public. But in all honesty, I, I am not too worried. And so uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Do look for some videos coming out this weekend, although I was told I'm not supposed to release videos on the weekend. According to the, the YouTube algorithm or something, it's a bad idea, but we're going to test that and find out. I, I've never been good at listening to uh, at listening to instructions, so we're going to go ahead and release another class video this weekend. Um, I'm going to let it be a surprise what the topic is on. Needless to say, it is not near as niche as the two that came out last night. Those were definitely very specific issues. But thank you guys so much. And I will see everyone over at 7 p.m. on the original Mark Z. I am not certain if I will be jumping on the you know behind the camera uh, for tonight. But I know that I will be there watching along. And so see everyone over there. Thank you again, Kukla, and everyone that helps out. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. See you guys.